Chemical pollution has been shown to cause serious threat to several populations of marine mammals. My research focuses on killer whales and dolphins, and I'm particularly interested in the impacts of chemical pollution on these animals. So our research found that levels of chemical pollution are still exceedingly high in several of the species that we looked at. So we looked at 11 different species of marine mammal and we looked at six different pollutant classes. And if we take killer whales as an example, and a specific chemical pollutant known as polychlorinated biphenyls or PCBs, we found that average concentrations in these animals exceeded the most widely acknowledged threshold for toxic effects in marine mammals by over 30 times, and so that's particularly concerning. And if we looked at the most recent five years of the study, so between 2014 and 2018, we found that in almost half of the animals we looked at, levels of PCBs exceeded the threshold for toxic effects. So the data from this study arose from a long-term monitoring program called CSIP, Cetacean Strandings Investigation Program. It's a long-term study funded by DEFRA, been going for 30 plus years. Essentially, it's tasked to investigate strandings of vulnerable marine species around the shores and trying to learn more about the threats they face. But beyond just how they die, we collect a huge number of samples, material and data to also shed light on animals' lives as well as their deaths. And I think because this long-term continuous time series we have in the UK, we can see the changing nature of those threats over time, and that's equally important. It's not just what they're dying from, it's what they're dying from and the changes the threats they face in the UK. So we always appeal to the public, if you find something on the beach, please report it to us, because that can then lead on to informing the rest of our research too. It's really important to study chemical pollution in marine mammals because they're considered to be sentinel species, so they can be indicative of the health of our oceans, and so it's really important to understand the threats that they face. And they're often considered to be canaries in the coal mine in terms of the health of our oceans, but not only just the health of our oceans, but also human health, because obviously humans eat a lot of the same food sources as these animals. And that's evidenced by guidelines from the NHS that state that females that wish to have babies or are pregnant or girls should restrict their consumption of certain types of oily fish because of the levels of chemical pollution that are in them. Chemical pollution is interconnected with other issues such as climate change and is likely to exacerbate the threat in the future. So there are several things that need to be done to protect marine mammals from chemical pollution. So we need better regulation of current chemicals that are polluting the environment. We need more mitigation of chemicals that have already been banned. And we also need to be more proactive rather than reactive in terms of our regulation because these chemicals are so persistent, it takes such a long time to clean up their mess. We need to act now to protect these animals from chemical pollution. We urgently need science-backed measures to mitigate the risk that chemical pollution poses to these animals.